Hey, welcome back to episode 2 of AZ204 certification course. In this episode, we are going to learn about Azure App Service Overview. I will begin with helping you understand what is IaaS, PaaS and SaaS and what does Microsoft mean by Cloud Shared Responsibility Model. Then we will go and learn about different types of app services and I will give you an overview of these services. As you consider and evaluate public cloud services, it's critical to understand the shared responsibility model and which security tasks are handled by the cloud provider and which security tasks are handled by you or the customer. The workload responsibility vary depending on whether the workload is focused on software as a service or platform as a service or infrastructure as a service or IaaS. If you are an on-premises customer, you will be responsible for managing the entire stack from the storage to networking to compute and till the data. So if you look at it, for all the cloud deployment types, you own the data and the identities. You are responsible for protecting the security of your data and identities. Other responsibilities varies based on what type of cloud you choose. If you choose IaaS or Infrastructure as a Service, Microsoft will be taking care of giving you compute, networking and storage. You and your customer need to only worry about virtual machine, operating system, your application and the data. If you don't want to manage all of this, the best option is to choose Platform as a Service. Additional to compute, networking and storage, Microsoft will take care of the virtual machine, the operating system and the runtime for you. So you don't have much of a headache of managing your virtual machine, patching your operating system, installing the runtime, things like that. One common example for this platform as a service is Azure SQL or Azure SQL. The third and the most efficient one is software as a service. This is where Microsoft or the cloud provider will take care of most of the things. As a customer, you only have to handle data and access. One of the most common examples for the SaaS based software is um, Office 365 or Exchange Online, where you only worry about how you configure the application and pretty much everything in the backend will be taken care of by Microsoft. So regardless of the type of the deployment, Data, endpoints, accounts, and access management are the responsibilities retained by you. All right, so let's learn about what is App Service. Azure App Service is an HTTP based service for hosting web applications, REST APIs, and mobile backends. You can develop in your favorite language, be it .NET, .NET Core, Java, Ruby, Node.js, PHP, or Python. Applications run and scale with ease on both Windows and Linux based environments. And these app service not only adds the power of Microsoft Azure to your application such as security, load balancing, auto scaling, and automated management. You can also take advantage of its DevOps capabilities, such as continuous deployment from Azure DevOps, GitHub, Docker Hub, and other sources, package management, staging environments, custom domain, and TLS SSL certificates. All right, so before I explain you the key features of Azure App Service, I just want to take you to the Azure portal and show you the basic navigation of Azure portal and quickly show you where you can find the Azure App Service. We are not going to create it. I'm just going to show you how you can find Azure App Service. To access Azure portal, you can go to portal.azure.com. Provide your username and password and then you are into your Azure services or the Azure portal. Basically from here, you would be able to pick and choose any services of your liking. But please be aware that because it's a cloud service, any service which you run, you are obliged to pay the cost of the service to the provider. So if you are studying or you're a student and you don't have credit, 
I would highly encourage you to create a free Azure subscription. You can type in create a free Azure subscription and go to the first link what you basically get. When you create your free Microsoft account, you will basically get lots of services for free for 12 months. But more importantly, you will get 200 USD. In my case, it is 300 New Zealand dollars for one month. That is plenty enough for you to try out most of the Azure services. And after the first month, you will basically get 25 free Azure services. So you can click on start free and that's how you can create your free Azure subscription. It basically requires you to have a credit card though. If you don't have a credit card, that's a problem. Uh, but if you do have, you don't have to worry about Microsoft charging you anything. Basically just a verification process. After you create the Azure subscription, you can basically log into the portal just like how I did just now. Basically, let me give you a quick walkthrough of the navigation pane. On the right hand side, on the top most corner, this is where you will find uh, the account which you use to sign in. You can sign in with multiple accounts. If you want to provide any feedback to Microsoft, this is how you will give your feedback so that Microsoft can improve these services. Any help and support, at any point in time while you are navigating through this portal, you would be able to come on to this particular page and that takes you to the support and troubleshooting page or you can create your support ticket as well. Or the settings tab will give you option to choose different directories or subscriptions. Let's assume you have multiple subscriptions. In my case, I have multiple subscription or you would be able to select or deselect these uh, over here. Appearance can be changed. You can decide whether you want the flyout or not. Flyout is what you see on the left hand side. Uh, I would always like to have it docked so, so that I can easily access all the favorite services which I most often use. Theme, I personally prefer the dark mode. It is sometimes very difficult to see things on a dark mode. So, um, so these days, during the training, I always switch it back to the light mode or, or the plain mode. Next to the settings window, there is a notification tab. This notification tab will give you information about what activities which is happening at the moment. So you can go ahead and dismiss it if you don't want to see it. And uh, the last but not the least is the cloud shell. So we will be talking about cloud shell uh, in the future. So we have bash or PowerShell mode we can choose when we run this Cloud Shell. Uh, this is what I call it as global search box into Azure. So if I want to quickly find something, any particular service, I come over here and type in. So for Azure App Service, I'm going to type in App Service. It basically gives you a list of Azure services um, and it can sometimes fetch information about a third party services as well. Another way of finding or creating a resource is going on the left hand side. Um, you can click on create a resource. If you click on create a resource, again, this is where you would be able to search for any service. I'm gonna search for app service, hit enter. Okay, this returns the entire service portfolio from not only Azure, from third party marketplace solutions as well. So Azure has its own marketplace where Third party vendors will be able to host their own solution. Uh, most time it is a one click solution where you can just click and deploy. Things like the WordPress or the Trend Micro solutions, what you see over here. So what I want to show you is the web app or the app service, which um, is the topic for today's conversation. So if I want to create a new app service, all I have to do is hit on create. It basically is going to ask me for a bunch of information. I fill that information and I can create my app service. So we will park it there and we will go and create an first Azure app service and many other services in the future episodes. Now let's go ahead and learn why do you use Azure app service? One of the key important feature of Azure app service is to have the ability to use multiple languages and frameworks. App services have first class support for ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, Java, Ruby, Node.js, PHP, or Python. 
You can also run PowerShell and other script or executables as background services. Another feature is managed production environment. What does that mean? App services can automatically patches and maintain the operating system and language frameworks for you. So you can spend time writing great apps and let Azure and Microsoft worry about the platform. Another feature is containerization and Docker. You can dockerize your app and host a custom Windows or Linux container in app service. And this will give you an ability to run multi-container apps with Docker Compose and migrate your Docker skills directly to app service. Another app service feature is DevOps optimization. You can set up continuous integration and deployment with Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket, Docker Hub, or Azure Container Registry. And you can promote updates through test and staging environments. This gives you ability to manage your apps in app service by using Azure PowerShell or the cross-platform command line interface or CLI. Azure App Service gives you global scale with high availability. So you can scale up or out manually or automatically. And you can host your apps anywhere in Microsoft Global Data Center infrastructure. And the App Service SLA promises high availability all the time. Okay, next feature is you get to have connections to your SaaS platforms and on-premises data. You can choose from more than 50 connectors from enterprise systems such as SAP, SaaS services such as Salesforce, and internet services such as Facebook, and you can access on-premises data using hybrid connections and Azure Virtual Networks. App service is also ISO, SOC, and PCI compliant. You will be able to authenticate with users with Azure Active Directory, Google, Facebook, Twitter, or Microsoft accounts. You can additionally create IP address restrictions and manage service identities. Application templates is another great feature. You can choose from an extensive list of application templates in the Azure marketplace such as WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. Dedicated tools in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code streamlines the work of creating, deploying, and debugging for you. And Azure App Service provides turnkey core support for RESTful API scenarios and simplifies mobile app scenarios by enabling authentication, offline data sync, push notifications, and more. You can run a code snippet or script on demand without having to explicitly provision or manage infrastructure and pay only for the compute time your code actually uses. So this concludes the episode number two. In the next episode, we are going to learn about Azure App Service Plans. So I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.